Playoffs? Yeah. Grassy Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to an episode of Packcast, the podcast where you don't. I do Packers fan. But it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. We're getting closer to the postseason. Grassy, and today I'm going to be giving you my predictions as to which teams in both the AFC and NFC are going to make the postseason. I'm not going to do like a super deep dive video. I'll save that as we get closer to the postseason and talk about more like rankings and things like that. This is more of just what teams I think are going to make it, what I expect their record to be after looking at the rest of their schedules and how they've been playing and leaving it at that. And I gotta say, good God, the AFC is a dumpster fire with the amount of teams and so is the NFC South because the NFC South basically has the same exact record and they play each other throughout the rest of these final five weeks. So yeah, it's going to be a time, but let's freaking frack and get to it. Starting with the AFC. This is the current playoff picture in the AFC. You got the Dolphins at one, then you got the Ravens, the Chiefs, the Jaguars, the Browns, the Colts, and Texans. Now, with the Steelers losing on Thursday Night Football, that is a big blow to their playoff chances. On top of that, Kenny Pickett's going to be missing a couple more games, and so things are looking... Ooh, not so optimistic in Pittsburgh, but there are other teams still trying to fight for their spot in the postseason in the AFC. You got the Broncos, the Bengals, the Bills, the Chargers, and even the Raiders are hanging out down there. And here's how I think the rest of the season is going to go. At the number one spot, who I think is going to be the one seed in the AFC, you got the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens, their remaining schedule is... A little bit challenging, but they're currently sitting at 9-3, and three, holding that number two spot. They got the Rams, the Jaguars, the 49ers, Dolphins, and the Steelers. And now there's some difficult games on that schedule. The Rams, I think, will be at least challenging. On top of that, you got the Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence may have returned at that point. Followed by the 49ers for the last Monday night football game. And then you got the Dolphins who are going to be a challenge. But to be completely honest with you, I think the Ravens right now are playing some really good football. I see them only losing one of these games, and that's to the San Francisco 49ers. I think that's going to be a really challenging game and a potential Super Bowl preview. But with losing just one of these last five games, that would put them at a 13-4 and record, and I would have them beat the Dolphins. So that means they would be sitting there at the top seed in the AFC. Number two would be the Miami Dolphins sitting also at 13-4. and Their remaining schedule is not too bad. They got the Titans, the Jets, the Cowboys, the Ravens, and the Bills. Now, those last three games could definitely be challenging. However, the benefit for the Dolphins is that against the Cowboys and the Bills, they're going to be played in Miami. Miami, and we know that that could definitely be a home field advantage. So I do see them winning out except for the game against the Ravens. They definitely could drop a game to the Bills or the Cowboys, depending on how the Bills are playing and looking at you Cowboys as well. But yeah, I think the Dolphins will be good enough to clinch that number two seed. They will be able to win the AFC East. And yeah, from there, let's see if they could beat some winning teams. Then the number three spot, you got the Kansas City Chiefs. I have them finishing at 12 and 5. Right now, they're 8 and 4. They have the three spot. And their last remaining games are against the Bills, Patriots, Raiders, Bengals, and Chargers. Very winnable games. I did say that I think the Bills are going to beat the Chiefs this week. I know Isaiah Pacheco is dealing with an injury right now, and that would not help things because he's one of their best players on that offense. But to be honest with you, I think the Chiefs have a really winnable schedule. I think they'll beat the Pats, the Raiders, the Bengals, and the Chargers. And so they would only have one loss in these last five games, giving them that number three spot. And from there, let's see if they can clean things up and get back to the Super Bowl. And rounding out all the division winners at number four, I got the Houston Texans, who are currently sitting at the seven seed at seven and five. Their final games are the Jets, Titans, Browns, Titans, and Colts. And with that schedule, I think the Browns and Colts are going to give them some problems, but I definitely can see the Texans winning out here, which would give them a 12 and five record, sealing up that number four spot. 
And for the Texans, they've had a phenomenal year. If they're able to not only make the postseason, but win their division in a rebuild year, I just think that speaks volumes to how good that coaching staff is, how good C.J. Stroud is. That defense is starting to come along, as you saw against the Broncos. And yeah, I think the Texans should be favored to win the AFC South, especially after Trevor Lawrence just got hurt. And so I have them finishing at number four. Number five, I got the Cleveland Browns finishing with a record of 11 and six. Right now, the Browns are at the five spot with a seven and five record. Their remaining games are against the Jaguars, the Bears, the Texans, the Jets, and the Bengals. Now, there's a couple games which I'm a bit worried for. They're going up against the Jaguars this weekend, but I don't know if Trevor Lawrence is going to play. I'm going to assume he's not, so I think the Browns are going to be able to get that win. But I really only see them losing to the Texans. I think they can beat the Bears, the Jets, and the Bengals. And so because of that, they would finish at 11-6 and six with just one more loss. They, of course, wouldn't be winning the division because that would belong to the number one seed Ravens. But with that defense, the Browns can definitely cause some problems at that five spot. And depending on who their quarterback is, we'll see how far they go in the postseason. Number six, you got the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's right, Jags fans. All is not lost. I imagine Trevor Lawrence is going to miss a game or two, but considering the guy's walking around without a boot already, maybe it's not even going to take two games. But the Jaguars' remaining schedule is very doable. However, they have some tough games against the Ravens and also the Browns this week. I think, again, Trevor Lawrence is probably going to miss that game. But again, you have the Browns, Ravens, Buccaneers, Panthers, and Titans. I think they win those last three games. They're very, very winnable. And then they lose against the Browns and the Ravens to give them that 11-6 and record. It would be one below the Houston Texans. And so because of that, they wouldn't be winning the division but they'd still make it into the postseason. And with a healthy Trevor Lawrence after that, who knows how far they'll go. And finally, at the number seven spot, you got the Indianapolis Colts, who are currently sitting at the sixth seed. I have them finishing also at 11 and six. Now, the Colts are a weird football team. I'll be very honest with you. Jonathan Taylor, he's not going to be playing this weekend. And I think it's going to be a tough game against the Bengals. And the Bengals, if they win, they could throw this entire thing out of order. However, at 7-5, the remaining schedule is the Bengals, the Steelers, the Falcons, the Raiders, and the Texans. I see them losing the game against the Texans in that final week. But who knows? That could theoretically be for the division. But the Colts are on a four-game win streak right now. They're playing well. If they can beat the Bengals, they'll be playing the Steelers without Kenny Pickett. I think they definitely can beat the Falcons and the Raiders, and they have enough momentum. Gardner Minshew's playing pretty well. The defense has been playing well. That pass rush is getting a whole lot of sacks right now. And the Colts are kind of just a weird team right now, but they got a ton of momentum. And because of that, I see them losing maybe one, potentially two of these games, but that's enough to get into the postseason at the number seven spot. And so just to recap in the AFC, one, you got the Ravens, two Dolphins, three Chiefs, four Texans, five Browns, six Jaguars, and seven Colts. And for those who are curious, I do have the Broncos at the eight spot with a 10 and seven record, losing against the Lions out of their remaining games, but that wouldn't be enough to get them into the postseason. The Steelers, I see them dropping almost the remainder of their games until Kenny Pickett can come back. The Bills, I actually have them at nine and eight, but losing to the Cowboys and the Dolphins at the end of the year. And the other teams like the Bengals, they don't have the easiest schedule to finish out their year, so it's going to be challenging for them. And unfortunately, they won't make the postseason. But yeah, kitty goes meow next year. Then heading over to the NFC, we got the dumpster fire division of the NFC South. Somebody's got to make it. The Rams are in contention. The Seahawks are in contention. The Packers and Vikings are currently in it. Let's break down how I see these standings shaking out. The number one seed, I think that's going to belong to the San Francisco 49ers with a 14-3 and record. They have a winnable schedule ahead of them. They're playing the Seahawks, Cardinals, Ravens, Commanders, and Rams. And while I do think there are some games that are going to give them some challenges, especially that Ravens game, I do think it's very possible for the 49ers to win out. If they are to remain healthy, I think they're the best team in football. And clinching that number one seed, nobody is going to want to go to Santa Clara. And so because of that... 49ers, you got the bye week. At number two, I got the Philadelphia Eagles at 14-3. and three. They are currently the number one seed. They got games against the Cowboys, Seahawks, Giants, Cardinals, and Giants once again. And those last three games, I think, are incredibly winnable. I think they should have no problem there. I think the Seahawks might be a little bit of a challenge, but I do see them dropping one game, and that's this week against the Cowboys. The Eagles can definitely win, and in that case, they will still be vying for that number one seed. But... 
Right now, I do have the Eagles dropping one game, which would put them at 14-3, and three, tied with the 49ers. But, of course, the 49ers have the tiebreaker because they just beat the Eagles this past week. So because of that, Eagles, you lock up the two seed. And, yeah, you don't have the bye, but maybe you'll see the 49ers again. Number three, I got the Detroit Lions finishing with a 12-5 and five record. The Lions are currently the number three seed, sitting at 9-3. and three, And their remaining games are against the Bears, Broncos, Vikings, Cowboys, and Vikings again. Now, I do see them losing against the Dallas Cowboys. I think that will be a close game. And the Lions defense is scaring me a little bit. I don't have a ton of faith in them right now. They are injured a bit. I know Aaron Glenn is not the most popular person in Detroit. But to be honest, I see them losing against the Cowboys and potentially dropping a game against the Vikings and or Broncos. I only gave them two losses, even though it is theoretically possible that they lose more than that. But I do think they'll drop a game to the Vikings. We'll have Justin Jefferson back or potentially the Broncos in what will be a close game. But realistically, I don't see them losing more than two games, locking up that three seed at 12 and five. And congratulations, Lions. That would mean you win the NFC North. Coming in at the four spot for the NFC South. And just a quick reminder, the first four spots of all the playoff standings are the division winners. I always get somebody every year going, oh, you think the Cowboys are going to be below the Falcons? No, I, I don't think so. It's just, that's just how the standings work. But at number four, I got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers finishing with an eight and nine record. And hear me out. Here's how I think the NFC South is going to shake up. For the Falcons, I think they're going to lose against the Buccaneers this week. Then they're going to win against the Panthers, lose against the Colts, win against the Bears, which I think is going to be a really close game, and then lose against the Saints in the final week, giving them an 8-9 and nine record. Then you go to the Buccaneers. I think they'll be beating the Falcons, losing to the Packers, losing to the Jaguars, because Trevor Lawrence should be back at that point, winning against the Saints, and winning against the Panthers to also put them at 8-9. and nine. And then finally, the Saints, I have them winning against the Panthers, winning against the Giants, losing to the Rams, losing to the Buccaneers, and winning against the Falcons to also put them at 8-9, and nine, which means the NFC South would come down to the final week. And I think the Buccaneers are just a more balanced football team right now. Their defense, while is not the greatest, Baker Mayfield's been playing pretty solid. And the Saints, they just can't be consistent. And the Falcons, I I just don't believe enough in Arthur Smith and plus their schedule is not the easiest coming up. So yeah, at number four, I have the Buccaneers at eight and nine winning the NFC South and whoever plays them might just have a bye week. Number five, I got the 13 and four Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys are currently sitting at number five with a nine and three record. The rest of their schedule is against the Eagles, the Bills, the Dolphins, the Lions, and the Commanders. So they do have some tough games coming up. I do think that they will win all of those games except against the Dolphins. Now, it could very likely happen that they lose against a team like the Lions or even the Bills and potentially even the Eagles. So the Cowboys theoretically could fall even further. If they lose, let's just say three out of their next five games. I do not think that will happen. Dak Prescott has been playing well, and I know the defense just gave up a lot of points to the Seahawks. But overall, I think the Cowboys are a solid football team this year. So I have them finishing 13 and four. Potentially could go lower, but with the shape of the NFC, the other two seeds, I have them at 10 and seven apiece. So the Cowboys, they can afford to lose a couple games. Number six. I got the Minnesota Vikings making the postseason with a 10-7 and record. The Vikings are currently sitting at the sixth seed with a 6-6 six and six record. They have the Raiders, the Bengals, the Lions, the Packers, and the Lions again. Now, like I said before, with the Lions, I see the Vikings beating them one time and splitting the series. Justin Jefferson's returning this week against the Raiders. I do think they'll defeat the Raiders. The Bengals, I think, will be a close game. They'll lose to the Lions once. They'll beat them once. And then I have them potentially beating the Green Bay Packers. And that does not make me feel good, but... Yeah, I just hope Justin Jefferson doesn't destroy us again. But yeah, the Vikings, they do have a winnable schedule these last five games. And with Josh Dobbs, I know he struggled against the Bears. Having Justin Jefferson back and also having Addison and TJ Hawkinson, I think that offense is going to, of course, get better with Justin Jefferson returning. And so because of that, number six, I have the Vikings. And that means we just have one more spot. And at number seven, 
I got the Green Bay mother-loving Packers. Finishing with the same record as the Vikings, but the Vikings would have the tiebreaker over the Packers because of their wins against them. The Packers, the rest of their schedule, they could definitely win out. Their next five games, the Giants, the Buccaneers, the Panthers, the Vikings, and the Bears. All winnable games. I see them potentially losing against the Vikings. If not the Vikings, maybe they could drop a game against the Buccaneers. But that would still give them a 10-7 and record. And considering this is an evaluation year, I could not be happier if this is the case. I would like it, of course, if they moved up to the number six seed, which I think is possible because the Vikings, maybe they could lose to the Bengals or they get swept by the Lions or even lose to the Packers. But I do have the Packers clinching that seven seed, making the postseason and we would be playing the Eagles, so that probably wouldn't go well. And just for curiosity, I did take a look at the Rams and the Seahawks. I have them both finishing at 9-8. and eight. The Rams' remaining schedule is against the Ravens, Commanders, Saints, Giants, and 49ers. I have them losing two of those games against the Ravens and also San Francisco, bringing them to 9-8, and eight, which wouldn't be enough to make it into the postseason. Those are just two really tough teams to play against, though... You never know. Maybe the 49ers will have the number one seed locked up. Of course, the Packers do have the tiebreaker over the Rams as well, even if they wind up beating the Ravens. And the Seahawks, they're playing against the 49ers, Eagles, Titans, Steelers, and Cardinals. I see them winning their last three games, but losing their next two against the 49ers and Eagles, failing to make the postseason again, having a nine and eight record. But just to recap for the NFC, at one, you got the 49ers, two Eagles, three Lions, four Buccaneers, five Cowboys, six Vikings, and seven Packers. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Which teams do you think are going to make that playoff push? Let me know. You know, I saw me at Tom Grassi Comedy, all social media you see down below. A big shout out and thank you to all the patron and YouTube members for supporting this channel. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassi. And as always, go pack, go.